GDOC 2020. We are thankful for you and for your support. Now we're going to keep this show going with our next talk, which is culturally aligned game protagonist design. Now, when a game has elements that speak to you and your culture, you identify with that a bit more and the experience changes because it's personal to you. Our next speaker is going to talk to us about his experiences in character driven game design. He's also going to show us how we can dispel the belief that diverse characters don't sell games. Now, John Diaz is a first generation American from Spanish Harlem in New York City. He has roots in the Dominican Republic and he studied game development at Full Sail University. He has gone on to work for studios WB Games Montreal, Midway Austin, as well as Rockstar San Diego, and has done game design on Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2, as well as Grand Theft Auto 5. Currently, he is in Seattle, Washington, making video tutorials for Amazon's Lumberyard game engine. Let's hear it for John Diaz. Thank you, Kwabana. That was a heck of an introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. Welcome, GDOC. I'm super happy to be here. I'm John Diaz. Thank you for coming to check out my micro talk on culturally aligned game protagonist design. Quick disclaimer. These are just my thoughts and opinions as a game developer growing up in the 90s. And I'm selfishly really looking to encourage people to make more characters who are broader and more human and more diverse whatever that may mean for you. Many of the mainstream games don't really hone down on this. Games like Fortnite, Minecraft, Fall Guys, their gameplay and freedom of expression is what drives them. However, right behind gameplay comes the world and the characters you play as and that you interact with. And that's where I believe we can do much better. Uh, just like Quab and I was saying, you know, I've been around a few different studios, teams, and projects. I've been studying the craft since 2000s, been doing it professionally for 13 years. My first game at Midway Austin in Texas was Black Sight. And that gave me my first experience driving with a straight white male protagonist. Moving on to Rockstar, working on Red Dead 1, and then on to GTA 5, I got to work building content revolving around Franklin, a character who I was much more excited to work with because I felt him to be more relatable to what, what I what was driving me. After a couple of years at Red Dead, working on Red Dead Redemption 2, making the move over to WB Games Montreal, that's where I learned how precious IP is working with characters owned by DC Comics and how guarded they are. And I felt like that's something that we as developers can learn a lot from, is to really take time in growing our characters and fostering them and honing on every little detail. Uh, you know, we would always ask ourselves questions like, would Robin do that? Would Nightwing really say something like that? Would Red Hood really shoot that guy in the face, right? Or would Batgirl act this way? Or would she be much more um, uh, behave like a detective, right? More true to her character. And now at Amazon, I'm able to work with a broader community, encouraging, encouraging more people to get into game development and bring their unique perspectives to life on their technology. Uh, here's a quick mini map for where I hope to take you through. We'll start out with the status quo. I'll touch on what I see publishers and investors typically ask for. And then I'll jump into how we can break the mold. We'll touch on why this needs to be challenged and we're the ones to do it. And then I'll share design templates to arm you down your potential journey as they, we're, they're all different and unique. Here, after that, I'll touch on the main ingredient, the sasson, the way of building a true recipe for each of your own characters in particular your, your protagonist, the one that you're spending all of your time driving and making decisions through. After that, we'll move on to the deep design chain. And that's where I'll show you the unique relationship that your game has uh, with your character, the world and the gameplay and how those are all symbiotic with one another. Finally, we'll move on to just a categorizing the game protagonist across three different tiers so that you can gauge where your characters fall. 
and then at the end of it, last but not least, I encourage everyone to not go at it alone and um, uh, emphasizing the importance of uh, having a diverse and inclusive cast of testers or a network of friends to play through your content. What we have today, what I've seen in my experience is publishers and investors are very risk averse. They want mass market, wide appealing, relatable characters or one that has proven financial success. So what that ends up resulting in is kind of the same carbon copy vanilla characters uh, from one game to the next. There's a book called Life 3.0 that paints this narrative of an AI that uses machine learning techniques and is trained to develop you know, movie scripts and screenplays by you know, turning it on the internet. And in a very black mirror-y way, if you applied this to video games today, it would probably spit out a game with a white male cis protagonist who has uh, insane marksmanship with an M4, probably fighting a group of Nazi terrorists or something like that. And I don't know about you, but that is extremely disappointing. And it is a, a wake up call given the size of the game industry and how it's growing every year. And specifically you uh, attending this expo, the, the diverse talent behind them, we can, it, it's up to us to, to break that mold. Now, in today's climate, more than ever, the world needs to get comfortable and familiar with the unfamiliar and uncomfortable. Juno Diaz, one of my favorite authors who writes in an American immigrant Dominican voice and commonly throws Spanglish in his writing. A classic quote you'll see is uh, something like, you know, People will read a book that is one third Elvish, but you know, read two sentences in Spanish and they think we're taking over. And so what I wanna drive home there is, you should expect to alienate your audience at first and that's okay. And then challenge them and walk them through as designers to get out of their comfort zone and get familiar with what they don't know, right? Let's get more experiences developed that incorporate more interesting, uh, culture that is representative of people of the global majority, as opposed to what we have more frequently. And additionally, avoid the stereotypes, the weak damsel in distress, the token African-American sidekick, the insecure athletic bully. How can we do this? I'm glad you ask. At the core, we'll just walk through some of the basic fundamentals when you're setting out to build a new character from the ground up. There's lots of different ways to do this. There's no one right way. This is just one technique I like to guide people through. And I got it from Fox's character analysis pyramid. And quite simply, it's really a one pager and step through these in any order you like. And more often than not, you're going to revisit one as you make decisions in another tier of that pyramid. But I like to show this as a hierarchy where the steps at the top inform the steps at the bottom. And then once you have those, which take much more room in uh, different areas of your character. So for example, as you, before ever looking at any reference or images, break down some of the considerations for aesthetics, major features, any abnormalities and augmentations, even sexual preference. Personality types can be a wide range, right? Logical, emotional, introverted, extroverted, friendly, reliable. Role for us is protagonist, right? This is a, the main character of the game that you're controlling or multiple. And then as you work your way down, you go through the, what defines them as a character, right? What are their challenges from day to day on their journey? And how will they change as the game progresses to grow and adapt and, and, and drive them to be a, a better or different person by the end of the journey? Major accomplishments are key for any game journey or narrative, right? These are the major arcs or the can, uh, major arcs of your story 
or your key mission beats. Or it can be a part of the backstory that you can flash back to or a key moment in the game, you know, toppling the tyrant ruler of an enslaved land or gaining acceptance into a tribe of guardians or getting our favorite, you know, getting revenge. Uh, all of that brings me to the cultural context. The cultural context I'll dive into in the next slide, but taking all of that hierarchy and mapping it to your character's ultimate worldview, taking a big picture of everything above it, typically by the end of your journey, worldviews are completely flipped upside down, right? Uh, a major accomplishment where you were rooted in or even finding who you thought you were is a farce. Take all of that and throw them into different scenarios to test your beliefs, right? How would they handle injustice or a confrontation with a loved one or handling authority? Just some ideas to test your character. But the cultural context is where we can really drive in on. Going back to what Kwabana said is there's so much there in terms of games, um, accessories, power-ups, um, you know, healing items, the terms that the things are referred to as, right? Uh, that can be, can resonate much more with what we are from, what the world at large is not used to seeing, right? You know, people will eagerly jump on a mushroom and, and expect to power up. But when you throw something uh, more akin to what I'm used to, right? Like some platanos, you know, they'll, they'll you know, I think you can misinterpret that. Oh, what does a banana do, right? Like that's 5P, that's essential. Uh, however, there's many facets to a culture. And when you step through these, a large part of culture, undeniably from square one, comes from your physical location. What's around you, the location of uh, where your character hails from, you know, this this has impact on everything from your language, your tradition and rituals. I bucket spiritual beliefs or religion in there, the knowledge and the stories, even the food you eat, right? We've touched on that. Arts are a key part that is also passed down. And in my personal experience, it's what I heard playing on the radio or blaring out of boom boxes as I walked around the streets of New York, you know, if we're mostly for me, it was hip hop or dance hall or salsa or merengue or bachata. And, you know, a lot of great ethnic art in the museums on Museum Mile and even in the literature I read, right, going back to Juno Diaz. Tools and objects these days tend to fall into two categories, right? Android versus iOS. But depending on your trade or craft or the needs of your community, this is a chance to go really deeper in on, you know, it could be uh, spray paint cans, right? Graffiti, uh, tap dancing shoes, right? That, that I don't know, you may give you different moves or abilities. Uh, insane finger dexterity from circuitry and welding. Techniques or skills have a wide spectrum that range from, you know, physical rhythm from dancing or Olympic sports to mental reasoning and, you know, arithmetic and law. Some of these key skills that I don't see really used in the mainstream, right? Uh, aside from the, the stereotypical, like, oh, you know, super strong or athletic or agile. Language is beautiful. Language is one that we can easily hone in on in our games because of the, the glory of subtitles and voice acting. And it's key even before we get into a place where we want to think about who would speak, be the voice of our character. But language is beautiful, right? English across the globe has like 30 different dialects. Um, so, and in, you know, walking around anywhere, one person from the next can be speaking the same language, but sound completely different. And all the while, you that never really gets conveyed in games. We can get really crazy when you start to compound those ethnic cultures and backdrops with craft cultures, right? If you want to get into things like skateboarding, surfing, 
hip hop, right? And how that maps to your aesthetics, your swagger, your animation, your ability, your move set. Again, going back to dialogue, going back to those items in the world that you pick up or you interact with or show um, high significant value. With your character built out, you have this vital part of a three piece deep, what I call deep design chain. Your character, as I hope to convey, is marred with the world, right? And all of those relationships should have an impact on the gameplay, right? The verbs that you're doing in game, the aesthetics of what you see and how your character moves and interacts in the world. Any decisions you make on your character side should feed into and out of the world your character is in and has come from. Um, an example can be, you know, hey, your character is very agile, free running, climbing skills that have been developed naturally growing up in some type of high altitude environment or a jungle and building their agility to survive grants them a unique vision mode to traverse mountains or other high rise structures, which impacts, again, you know, their move sets, their animations, their physical appearance, you know, right, really thick muscular forearms and, and of course, trickling down to the level design right now, now your level takes on an air of verticality potentially and challenge them to grow these skills. For the sake of comparison, I'd like to take a moment and step through what we have and break them down into three different tiers, right? Going from the default vanilla tier into a better direction and into what I like to call the aligned tier. So you have games like Gears of War and Marcus Phoenix or Resident Evil Chris Redfield, right? Um, white males who have a really good proficiency with firearms and probably come from a military background. One step in the right direction, at least switching up the gender, it's taking Alloy from Horizon, right? Voiced by a prominent woman in the games industry. And they do some interesting things in setting up her childhood in a village community where you can see some of the hunter and gathering uh, influence what she later does for the rest of the game. Trained by her family, how to survive, right? Passing on that tradition and knowledge. It, from what I can dig up, it seemed like the narrative team was mostly male. Um, the first time I played as a male of Dominican descent was Louis Lopez in GTA 4 and Ballad of the Gay, Gay Tony. And it was significant to me as I walked around New York City shouting out quips like, que lo que, as a bouncer from a nightclub. Uh, but that's as far as it went before it got into the typical GTA campaign motivations of making money and eliminating anybody that got in your way. This bottom tier, the what I like to call, what I'm coining, you know, trademark, the Align tier. I remember playing way back in the day, Mark Echoes getting up content under pressure and taking helm of Train, who was voiced by Talib Kweli. And I was really immersed in this world that had an amazing soundtrack, um, had fashion on characters that I was used to seeing in the world around me. And in terms of what I had seen, this is a game that is built in and around the culture of hip hop with a uniform that you saw in the late 90s, early 2000s, right? Baggy jeans, hoodie, construction boots, um, Tim's, right? You be careful, you can't trademark brands, you know, always got to come up with your own. Um, but, you know, with Mark Echo's background in graffiti, that, that was a key verb in the game was getting up and doing graffiti and taking that and mapping to it a stealth gameplay loop, right? Sneaking around, not getting caught um, and getting up, right? To to shine a light on the 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 uh, the gentrification that was happening in the game. The protagonists in Treachery and Beatdown City are refreshing because 
you have a playable cast with familiar names like Lisa Santiago, who is a Puerto Rican Latinx female boxer, uh, police chief's daughter. Uh, you have another character you play as it's an undocumented immigrant pro wrestler named Brad. And then a Jeet Kune Do slash Capoeira fighter from Brazil named Bruce. And so for the genre of the game, for being a, a beat em up, you have these key decisions reflecting their physique, their appearance, the way they speak to one another, their attacks, and the motivations in a beat em up game. Right. So and a decent change written and designed by, you know, GDLC's very own Sean Alex Allen for perspective. Right. Like we need more people writing their voice in these games. As you're venturing down this deep design path and pushing boundaries and the status quo by familiarizing people or even in some cases introducing them to a foreign culture, expect to, as I said before, alienate and even antagonize people, right? This is natural to be expected whenever you're venturing across these boundaries. I encourage it to be a goal of a game designer, right? It's, it's, it's part of our job is to craft and help people get past that friction and get into the core of the game. A way to do that is naturally by making use of play testers and gathering feedback from those play tests specifically people from as many different walks of life, right? In your network, your friends, backgrounds, and identities as possible, and get the input to design through and around those friction points. So if someone can't understand the dialogue, uh, maybe maybe there's um, some normalizing you could do to the subtitles, right? If someone finds out like some gross misinterpretation or malalignment, you know, it's important that that you find out before it goes out in the wild and, you know, trolls surprise you because we all have blind spots, right? And the only way that we can uncover those is with getting enough perspective on what we're designing when we're developing it, as opposed to after we all kind of like wrapped it up and shipped it, right? You maybe can fix it with simple art or a color swap or a narrative change. Quick takeaways. I, I know I've, I've run long and I apologize. Uh, I don't want to be respectful of your time. But if nothing else, please, please, please challenge the status quo. Know that every detail matters, right? It may not be something that the internet catches on to and runs with today, but know that nothing everything lives forever, right? And it will come back. So every de every detail matters, right? It can speak to, you don't know who it can reach to and inspire and motivate like, oh my gosh, look, this is something my grandmother told me about. And now um, I've learned more now I can have a discussion with my peers or even do some research and kind of bring that back into the mainstream again. Um, deeply design your characters, push past the stereotypes, bring your culture, write what you know and research and confirm what you don't from multiple perspectives. Uh, thank you. That's all I have. I love discussing this stuff. You can reach out to me on Twitter at L Kingpin. You can find me lurking in Lumberyard, Discord, and forums. And I'll be hanging out after the talk. Uh, thank you so much, GGLC. Uh, thank you for having me. I hope to be back or be involved however I can. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, John. Uh, I'm I'm really impressed by what you had to say. I totally remember the day when Shadow Man came out on the 64, and I was just blown away because I was like, whoa, you know, there's, you know, uh, a man like there's a man of color who's the protagonist in the game, and the culture around like you know the the mysticism of voodoo and everything like that wasn't just like an afterthought. It was actually like baked into the game. So there was an entire kind of world that was created, you know, specifically around uh, like the, the powers and just the, the language and everything like that. So I think it's super important to have games where, you know, it's not an afterthought, where the Absolutely. culture is in there and it's everything you do uh, is very specific. Like there are call outs to, you know, the food and the language and even the clothing and mannerisms, you know, because I mean, I think it's that's just what makes everything have that personable feel so thank you so much for calling that out and for showing us that you know it's, it's a real thing and it can be done so we appreciate that thank you thank you Kwabana. much appreciated all right everyone who's watching this you know, share your comments 
like, you know, share this. And if you want to see more of yourself in games, you know, let us know. Make your, make your voices heard. That's what we're here for, inclusivity, and we appreciate you and your support. All right, keep it locked in. GDOC 2020.